Okay, so this all looks to be working pretty well. It's been running for about half an hour now and it started at 30 degrees and it's now down to 8.8. .8. So green stuff is 50-50 uh, ethylene glycol water mix. Um, this is a little um, chiller unit. Um, it's controlled by this control board. It's pulling a bunch of power. Um, and I got some 12 volt fans blowing on it. So this all, this whole situation here should replace the dry ice so I can run uh, vacuum dried food without having to shell out for dry ice all the time. Um, so this, uh, the, the coolant and the chiller should work down to negative 30 degrees C which should put me in the right range for, for, vacuum, for vacuum drying. Uh, that submersible pump in there, dunno. Um, a little bit worried because if that pump cocks out, cocks out, sorry, uh, then this will freeze solid, uh, which is bad. So my laser cutter has the same one of these in it, uh, doing the jacket cooling for the laser, uh, but it's got a flow sensor in there, so if the flow sensor uh, detects that the flow stops, then it turns off the compressor. Uh, but no such protection here. So these things can pull up to about 400 watts of heat out of the liquid and put it out the radiator, so that's a fair bit. Uh, at the moment I've just got these dinky little 12 volt fans blowing on it, but I have got this big chunky uh, 24 volt brushless here, but it is extremely dangerous, uh, like finger removingly dangerous. Um, so I'm going to uh, laser cut a grill to go over that and sort of a cold box to go around this whole thing. Um, so I'm just going to keep an eye on this for a while, um, see how low it gets, see if anything fails. These are a bit fiddly, uh, but I seem to have found a combination of settings and specific units that gets it up and running. Uh, these run real hot, um, according to the data sheet, they can run up to 100 degrees. Uh, this one's at about 60 at the present. Alright, let's run it. So it's been running for about uh, two or three hours now. Let's say two hours. Um, and we've got some ice forming on the pipes here. Uh, it's down to negative 6.2. Um, the pump in there is still pumping. I pulled the outlet up above the, the coolant level so I could see it moving. Um, this has taken ages. Um, so it seems there's diminishing returns. Um, the colder it gets, the less quickly it's able to pump uh, heat out of the, the coolant. Um, so I think it's going to take a very long time to get down to negative 30. And once it's there, um, I'm not quite sure how much heat flux it's going to be able to handle down that low because it, if the amount of heat it can take out of the liquid reduces as the temperature gets colder then if it has to take out 100 watts of heat um, at negative 30 and it can't keep up with that then this is just not suitable for that for that application. Um, I do have uh, one of these that's um, two in series, so this is another one here, and it just goes, and there's a little <whistles> to join them together, um, and that would, um, you know, double the amount of cooling power. Um, but even then, I don't know. I don't know if I want to wait, like, put the chiller on to chill in advance for three hours, four hours, to get it down to cold trap temperatures. Hmm, I don't know. I'll leave this running and see how low it gets. Take okay, a bye. Hmm, okay, so, um, cold trap's down to about negative eight now. It's been running for about five hours. Um, the, um, a lot of ice forming, a lot of condensation. Um, and the radiator is not very hot. Like, I would estimate it's at about 35 degrees. Um, so it's really struggling to hit that temperature differential um, between the air and the liquid. It's having a hard time overcoming such a big gradient. Um, so I'm not really sure if this is going to be tenable. Like, there's lots of little improvements I could make to the system. Like you can see I've got some insulation foam uh, to try to stop uh, losing cold to the environment and um, slow down the condensation a little bit. Um, I can put a, a better, uh, more vectored, more, more um, better ducted fan on the radiator. Um, I can blow from this direction so I'm not blowing hot air onto the pipes. 
Um, there's a lot of little, little, maybe, you know, two or three percent tweaks I can make to the system that will make it better. Um, I don't think any of those tweaks are going to get me to the point where this is at negative 30 and suitable for use as a cult trap in a vacuum drying system. Um, which is a little bit disappointing, but, you know, it is handy to have a, a machine that can make cold. Um, so what I'm thinking of doing is grabbing some of that insulation foam, building a nice plywood box and a little controller with a temperature sensor on the compressor and a temperature sensor in the coolant and just building a sort of general purpose coldulation machine um, with a couple of those uh, chiller modules in a box and a nice portable thing that you can just plug in and away it goes. Um, I see that being handy um, but I don't know if it's going to work for the cold trap use case. Um, at work we had a, a freezer that would go down to negative 70. It had a two-stage chiller in there. Um, I'm not entirely sure if there was one chiller that got it down to negative 20 and then another one that took over and went from there or if they both worked in tandem the whole way down um, and effectively you'd have another chiller chilling the radiator of the first stage chiller um, which would decrease the temperature gradient that each chiller is trying to handle because um, you know I could get a radiator uh, or basically, instead of this radiator exchanging heat between the air, I could have another uh, heat exchanger here that exchanged heat from uh, the coolant loop of another uh, chiller in series. But that would be really hard to get all the plumbing sorted out. Um, so, I don't know. I'll leave it run, see how low it goes. I'll go back. Okay, it's 21.30 hours, uh, we've been running for uh, six hours now, uh, five hours now, and it's down to negative 10 degrees and it's not going any further. Um, I know this because the radiator is now at room temperature. Um, so the radiator needs to be hotter than the room in order to be able to add heat to the room from the coolant. So it's not going to get any further. Um, insulation, I don't know, I guess it worked. It's got a, a sheaf of ice trapped around it now as opposed to just dripping water onto the floor, so I guess. Um, yeah. So I think the only option from here is to have one of these pumping coolant through a radiator that is just sandwiched up against this one to blow cold air onto the radiator to reduce the temperature differential that this one has to handle. But I don't know if they can be bothered. I'll think about it. Okay, bye.